all issues education, the milestones, the challenges. Uh, this comes at the backdrop of the findings of a report by Equal Education after conducting a school social audit uh, on schools in Gauteng. The audit was conducted on 200,000 students in more than 200 schools in over 20 communities around Gauteng. The report covers learning conditions. It also identified other challenges like overcrowding, lack of libraries and labs, as well as shortages of desks and chairs. It also highlighted that about 10% of township schools are experiencing a sanitation crisis. Well, to discuss the matter, uh, with us uh, carrying this uh, conversation forward, let me introduce you to my panelists again, Edward Mosue, who is the Deputy Director General for Curriculum Management in the Department of Education in Gauteng, uh, Tsepo Motsepe from Equal Education, and also uh, Tseliso Ledimo, he is from Satu's Provincial, well, he is Provincial Secretary here in Gauteng for Satu. Thank you very much again, gentlemen, for staying on uh, this morning here on the program. When we ended off the conversation, we were talking about school groundsmen, which is a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a relevant topic to talk about. It's something, in fact, that you brought up during the ad break as well, and you agreed from Satchi's perspective. From some of the research, I mean, you, you talk about one groundsman or staff to look after the school. Um, is that even, do some schools even have one? <laughs> well, fortunately, yes, there, there is one uh, in, in most of our schools in, in, in the province. Uh, they act both as groundsmen and also as securities uh, for, for the school. But one of the things that we aim to achieve with the social audit as equal education, we aimed by, by going out and you know, meeting with community-based organizations that have members that have organized communities. We were aiming to get uh, uh, communities to start to go back and start taking charge of their schools, to mm -hmm. have an interest in what happens uh, at their schools. And we, we, we could sit here and say we've managed to do that. Now we have, through the, the process of the, the social audit, you know, organizations saying, if this is what it takes for us to understand what, what is, uh, where our kids, uh, what our kids are experiencing in schools, we are more than willing to go on a fact-finding mission, but not to condemn the department, not to say here are the problems, yeah. but to use it as a tool to reflect as well. For instance, issues around vandalism are, issue, are, are communal issues. Mo the people that go into those schools to break and to steal stuff are not people whom we don't know. These are people that stay with us. And communities through this process have asked themselves, as community leaders, parents have asked themselves, what can we do to make sure that uh, we, we, we stop the scratch of crime uh, affecting our schools. Yeah, is it is it is it perhaps an idea from the department to try and up that staff level in terms of looking after the school, more security, protection of the equipment that is delivered there, especially with some of the MEC's plans are massive for the Gauteng province, which we're going to get into now, including um, touch whiteboards and every pupil having tablets. Now, I mean, it's very ambitious. But we worried about blackboards, desks, and toilets that are being vandalized, never mind these high, this high-tech equipment. So in terms of, of getting more ground staff at the schools, is this in your plans? Absolutely. Let, let, me, let me indicate that um, you might uh, have heard that our MEC has already declared that all schools in Gauteng would be declared Section 21, meaning that they would, <coughs> they would be provided with their own resources and they will be given an opportunity to manage their resources. So part of the allocation in the resources is also to ensure that elements of maintenance that we've been sp speaking to, they may be able to deal with and deal with at the, at the local site without having necessarily to go to a district level or to go to head office. So that is, that is the one part. We understand though that there would have been elements where some of the schools may not have had the capacity to deal with that, and what do we, did we have to do? We had, had to provide for additional training and capacity building process for members of the school governing body. So that is the one aspect that we've had to deal with. In respect of additional capacity also that we are bringing to, to these schools, you might know, and I know Tsepa has spoken about uh, uh, security personnel and so on. Yeah. We have provided for each school, uh, for these, these schools, they, they have patrollers, and this is a, a, a project that we've also been running in conjunction with the Co Department of Community Safety. So there are, at each of these schools, you'd get community patrollers. But equally, there are general assistance that are being provided at these schools. But clearly, they, depending on the size of the school, there, there is therefore a need 
to make sure that you, you have sufficient numbers of general assistants that are provided that are then able to deal with these particular measures. So from that perspective, we do take note, but also it, it's also dependent on how you therefore utilize the resources that you have at the school as a principal and as a, as a school management team, as SGB, to say how then you begin to leverage. And I think it's an important thing because if all of these different components of the schooling system work together, yeah. we will then be in a position to see a major impact. But clearly, I mean, it's also because if I were to go back to the whole question of that sanitation on how we manage it, if all of us were to begin to say at what point do we take responsibility and ensure that we do not get investments that are made uh, to go down the drain because clearly government does not have it, uh, a bottom up, bottomless pit of, yeah. of, of funding and it is in that regard that we also have to begin to deal with issues of values around all of the all, all of these elements that absolutely that we speak into you you're bringing an important element about the the, the vision that the the current administration has in, in uh, ensuring that we actually provide for 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 a 21st century learning. And if I were to say, you might have noted that the MEC had spoken about, uh, there had been reports that he had actually re retrieved 88,000 ta tablets that were given out to schools. Yeah. And, and that message had been given as if those tablets were, were retrieved and would not be taken back to schools. There were two elements that had come. We had noted, as was previously reported, we had noted that there were breakages in schools. But we also had noted that, that those breakages partly would have been caused by the, the availability of these resources and investments that government would have made. And part of the retrieval process, therefore, seeks to make sure that we, we, we then retrieve these tablets, get sufficient security systems in place for these tablets, and we'll get, get them back to schools. So, there, is, so there, there should not be any contradiction that seeks to suggest that we're retrieving because it might suggest that the, pro program, that the program would be continuing. You might know that in the schools, for example, that were launched this, early this year where we've spoken about uh, paperless yes, classrooms. Yes, we in, were there as a program. In, in, in those schools, over 7,000 tablets were given to learners. I can report that only 11 were reported lost to date. It's all because they had all the different necessary security features. And as a result, once a learner has lost and he reports or she reports that their tablet is lost, we are able to activate the tracking systems that are in there and we've been able. There are instances where we were able to find, uh, you know, because young people are young people, one would have nicked it from the one and to the other. We would, we would find that they are actually hidden on the school grounds and through the tracking process. And it is all of these elements that we are trying to bring back so that the 88,000 uh, tablets that would have been retrieved are also provided. I'll be able with, to be with, given with back that, after this is put in. Yes. Okay, thank you for mm -hmm. the... the uh, I, I still want to talk more about <coughs> that, though. I'm going to move on to that subject yes. in a second. But mm -hmm. no, they're telling me time's up. I can't have time up yet. I have to get Satu's opinions on something. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about values. We talk about pride. We talk about responsibility. And all of these resources are given to the teachers, the principals, um, and those that are running the schools. Now, you represent all of these people. Mm -hmm. um, it, where, what, where is that sense of pride amongst teachers and headmasters where we see a lot of money being squandered by headmasters that, that are given this money and yet it's not spent in the right places and on the right things and mm. on the pupils and surely there should be a sense of, of governance within the school by these leaders. Mm. Children can't be expected to govern themselves. Mm. Mm. No, no, it's quite true. We, we, we have been consistently calling for capacity building of school management teams, school governing bodies, <coughs> who are playing oversight over the resources given to, to schools, uh, so that, as you say, uh, the funds are not misused. And we know that uh, Matthew Gonio School of Leadership and Governance in Gauteng is responsible for training <coughs> SGPs, uh, school management teams, including teachers. So the question of capacity building is an ongoing intervention that is taking place in the province. Uh, quite frankly, teachers are trying very hard under trying circumstances uh, to continue to mediate curriculum in the classrooms despite all these challenges that we have, backlogs of infrastructure, issues of security and safety in the schools. But teachers on a daily basis continue to walk into those schools, into those classrooms to mediate curriculum. As you would know in this province, if we were to use grade 12 as a yardstick, 
touting has been increasing results uh, continuously over a number of years. This is the product of the efforts of teachers in the, in the classroom. So, so they are trying very, very hard under trying circumstances to do their core responsibilities, which is to teach. But all these other issues of infrastructure backlog are a responsibility of the department and communities, as we have said it. And I think all of us agree that communities must take ownership of protecting the assets uh, that they have because a school is a public asset available to communities to educate our, our children and take the country forward. Mm -hmm. So there is a sense of pride in the teachers despite the challenges that are confronting all of us. And I'm saying even at the level of uh, the analysis of the annual uh, national assessment, there is an indication that there's some degree of improvement in maths, in literacy. So these are efforts of, of teachers who walk into those classrooms despite all the challenges to ensure that the core responsibilities are executed. But we continuously make a call for the department to look at a whole range of priorities that must be looked at, from security to LTSM to building capacity of SGP so that they know their role and can do proper oversight over the resources so that principals do not uh, misuse the funds and the funds are put to good use to take the education of our children forward. So all of these are plans that the, the department has to bring so that all of us can then say, here's a multi-pronged intervention that is put in place to ensure that uh, education transformation is taken forward. Okay, I just wanna round up this conversation now and I want to talk about just one one worrying thing, I, I am a massive fan of our education MEC. I really am. And I think, I mean, I was so impressed with him. He, he has such great vision. He really does for our province and going forward. However, there's, there's a lot of worries that sometimes um, maybe the, the MEC over promises and doesn't deliver on some of these, province, these promises. And I mean, let's, let's bring equal education into this conversation now and then we'll get your response. Um, we saw that, I think it was last year, that there was a promise that, that sanitation would be improved by August uh, last year, and this wasn't done. You marched on the offices. It was then province, we were done by November. It wasn't done. We are now sitting in the following year, June, and you do findings where it's, it's, it's still in a bad position. D do you have faith in the MEC? Well, Leon, we do have faith, not in the MEC as an individual, mm. but I think as an organization, we would like to have faith in the department as, as, as an organization, the, the Department of Education and Gauteng as an organization. Because we know the realities with MECs. Today it can be MEC Lisufi, tomorrow it can be someone else. Indeed. And we need to forge relations beyond just uh, the political head. Because our experience teaches us that before MEC Lisufi we struggled. I mean, we launched this uh, campaign in 2013 with the previous MEC, MEC Chrissy, whom together with her staff view this as a non-issue because I assume that the department thought, you know, our core issue is to teach the learners, l you know, issues of school infrastructure is not an issue. But one of the things that we've been critical of, as you rightfully put it, is, you know, the promises that the MECs make. In, 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 in reality, he can sit there and make these promises because he might assume that it is possible to, 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 to deliver. And within the department, some people might not have the same commitment or vision as him. But critical to that is district officers not playing their supportive role in the whole system. So you've got district officers, for instance, when we launched this in 2013, that you know, gave us the cold shoulder. A district office gave, gave us the, in, in, in Ekurulen North, gave us the cold shoulder. And these are officers that have di that direct contact with schools, direct contact with communities, but they said, hey, this is not our business up until we elevated the matter. And I feel we don't need to elevate matters yeah. to pr the provincial heads or the minister. We need to be able to take charge. If I'm a district director, I've been given responsibilities to manage the, as a particular district. I need to be able to set up a, a team to oversee to make sure that things are delivered. But we hope, we hope that the MEC, that's the message he, he's driving to, to his colleagues within the department to say, you need to be committed to the work. But just quickly, Part of this, uh, we need to view this, you know, issues of lack of sanitation infrastructure in Gauteng as a collapse of, of the education system in other provinces. We have a lot of learner migration from the Eastern Cape, and we need not look at that as just learner migration. We need to sit here and say, what is it that the MEC of education in the Eastern Cape is doing? 
how many director generals have left that office? What are the political? Why is it that we cannot get the education system in the Eastern Cape sorted? Why is it that our kids are the ones who are the first victims when 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 when, when two bulls start fighting? Okay, all right. I, I have to give you right to reply, but you have one minute, unfortunately. Then I've got to wrap this. Leon, it is regrettable that there would have been district officials that would uh, not have wanted to respond when there was a need. And I think those, those matters are matters that the HOD and MEC would have gone on record to say that we needed to, be, to begin to look at. But I, I also then should confirm that uh, our assessment is that f for whatever that the MEC would have promised, you might recall that when he got into office, he said in the first 100 days I will do a number of things. Yeah. We have gone back. And, and among those elements would have been that he had picked up sanitation as an example. And I can confirm that we, from, the, from re, the, the assessment report that we did of the 576 schools, we, there were, there were uh, toilets that were done. But part of what would have happened is that there were instances where we also picked up that poor workmanship would have contributed, but all of the other elements. And therefore, from our perspective is that they must, we would continue to monitor and monitor more strongly. But it, it is our view that uh, we, we have we've taken a view that we are all about the saving of the public and it is in that context that we'll continue to do so. Gentlemen, thank you for talking to us. Thank you very, very much for coming in and taking the time to be here. Uh, Edward Musue from the Department of Education in Gauteng, thank you for representing very, very well. Uh, Tsepo Mutepe, the co-head of Equal Education here in Gauteng, and of course representing Satu is uh, Tsiliso Ledimo. Thank you very much for being with us here on the program. This uh, debate continues after this. Two more guests joining us to take this forward. Stay tuned.